Hello, my name is Dr. Vaikuntan Rajaratnam and today we're going to talk about the uh, repair of flexor tendon using the modified capsular suture. The challenges facing the repair of flexor tendon is basically attempting to suture two structures that are longitudinal uh, collagen material uh, together is like trying to suture two shaving brush with the use of a standard surgeon's knot. This is not possible because of the knot cutting through the longitudinal fibers of the flexor tendon and that is why the need for complex surgical techniques to bring together two structures that have longitudinal fibers of collagen. So the challenges facing flexor tendon repair is how do we hold together two longitudinal structures which are consisting of fibers of collagen together. Here you can see a case in which there's been a rupture that has occurred in spite of our various techniques of grasping bundles of collagen fibers to bring together for a tendon repair. The standard technique that has been con commonly used is one of the modified Kessler suture in which the tendons are brought together by grasping sutures that occur on either side uh, of the suture and we will learn that today. The current standard practice is there should be a minimum of four core sutures that will hold the flexor tendon together and with the epitendon suture to close the edges which adds further strength and also avoids the exposure of collagen fibers which will then bring about the second dilemma is adhesions which is common in, hand, uh, in flexor tendon surgery. Here we see a diagrammatic representation of the modified Kessler suture. As you can see, there are two strands. This is the first uh, suture that you place through the tendon, but on either side it is grasping a bundle of fibers and there is a longitudinal and a horizontal component to the suture and in this way there would be a reduced chance of it cutting through the longitudinal fibers. The suture that will be used to produce the core suture will be a 4-0 proline in this case with the cutting end of the tendon. A longitudinal uh, suture is first passed uh, which exits on the volar surface of the tendon and then the needle will come out and then will go round to start the horizontal component as shown. As you can see now, the transverse uh, strand of the suture now is placed deep to the first suture, which is longitudinal, and this therefore creates a grasping loop on the far side. Now the needle is passed through the upper surface of the tendon, distal and deep to the transverse suture across the gap, and repeat the process on the other side. This therefore creates two uh, loops of bundles of tendon fiber that are grasped by the tendon and holding them together without pulling through and therefore can co apt the two tendons. Finally, the suture is then finished by the grasping of the loops and approximating the two ends together and providing adequate tension that will allow for the grasping of those loops tightly to, and this will re uh, prevent any gapping at the repair site and the knot in the gap. Uh, proline allows for this because it can therefore slide easily as you are doing this procedure. Once the knots have been tightened uh, on the Kessler core suture, it is then completed by adding the 6-0 proline suture as the epitendinous suture uh, is a simple running suture around the cut ends. This should eliminate any gapping and also smoothen the edges and contributes about 40% to the mechanical strength of the tendon. Here we see a modified version of this uh, sutures is the four strand modified backer suture. Instead of using just a single loop as a modified castler, multiple loops are used as a cross stitch and what this does it grasps bundles and volume of tendon tissue within the axis and this then 
allows for a strong grasp and prevents cut out and four so core sutures of this gives a very strong repair thank you